Are you sure what you said about uh, you with the dog? Or is it not true? Did you hurt that dog? Anything you gotta say? Are you sure, Vernon? Did you hurt the dog or not? That's what they're saying. Vernon, are you sure? It's your last opportunity, man. You wanna say anything? Not the big money. <laughs> Put right here. Okay. Then they got one more. All right. Sorry about that. No, you're good. That's all right. I'm used to it. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And before he starts, I just want to give you the, I'm going to give you the suspect information and he'll give you the details. Okay. So I'll stand here close so you can hear. Perfect. And just let me know when you're recording. Okay. Uh, the individual is, goes by the name of Vernon Ortiz. Um, he is approximately 40 years of age, and his SID number is 1123706. 1123706. Vernon, V E R N O N Ortiz, common spell. All right. So we have uh, your, your first and last yep. name, real quick. My name is Shannon Sims, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-S-I-M-S. -N -N I'm the Assistant Director for Animal Care Services. So what do we have here? What happened with the girl? So on the evening of August 2nd, uh, we received a call for animal cruelty. Uh, when, we, when we had officers arrive, what we found was uh, an animal with facial wounds. Uh, deeper investigation showed the animal also had uh, problems with its teeth. Uh, as we uh, did the investigation everything, we found that the suspect, the 40-year-old suspect, uh, it appears had, uh, had assaulted the animal with a six inch hunting knife. Uh, in addition to that, he had also used pliers to break off the canines of the animal to keep it from biting him. Uh, this all resulted from the animal uh, allegedly urinating on its own bed. Uh, the individual approached him at that point and uh, uh, perpetrated the axe. Is this his dog? His it is his, it's his girlfriend's dog. So it's not even his? No. What, what kind of dog is this? Uh, Cosmo is the name of the dog. It's a small Dotson blend type of a dog, so uh, not your not your big ferocious pit bulls, anything like that. A, a small, relatively uh, docile animal. What came to the conclusion of, you know, that he did this? Uh... Um, so after we did some some thorough investigation, both uh, SAPD and ACS investigators, uh, we ended up getting the individual. He did uh, did actually confess to the crimes. Uh, des described the nature of how things happened. Uh, the animal had a couple of pretty severe lacerations on its face, uh, and again, all four canines were uh, cut using wire cutter type uh, material uh, about an inch down. Who's going to be charged with? He's going to be charged with a third degree felony for animal cruelty to include torture. Um, so, so we'll be moving forward with those charges. What penalties does that come with? Uh, I obviously jail time. 
is a uh, is uh, a possibility or is a probability if he's found guilty, uh, and there's also uh, also fines associated with it. I believe it's up to ten thousand dollars in fines, um, but I have to verify that for you. Have you ever encountered something like this? Say again. Have you ever encountered something like this or investigated something like this? Unfortunately, uh, city of San Antonio, because it's such a large city, it's this isn't uncommon. Um, uh, obviously, the the situations are different, uh, but. But at the end of the day, we do see more of this than, uh, than folks would think. People torturing animals, people killing animals, being hum inhumane to the animals. And uh, fortunately, uh, we've developed a very, very healthy relationship with SAPD property crimes and the SAPD investigators. Uh, through this whole process, they worked hand in hand with my investigators and uh, uh, really pulled this thing off flawlessly. How's the dog? The dog is fine. Uh, it is recovering from its wounds. Uh, obviously, re required veterinary care, uh, uh, but at this time, it is recovering. Is it returned with the girlfriend? It is at this time with the girlfriend. Yes, ma'am. If there's anybody in a situation where it might they might be with a violent partner and they're afraid to leave their dogs, is there anywhere in the city that they can go and bring their pets as well? So we actually have developed a program with SAPD so that if uh, SAPD officer goes to a domestic violence call. The individual is concerned for their animals. Uh, we have a partnership with SAPD so they can call our officers out. We will actually uh, uh, locate the animals at ACS uh, in our quarantine facility so that nobody else has an opportunity to adopt them or anything. Uh, and we uh, obviously we try to hold those animals as long as we can to allow the individual to find a, a different living situation, things like that. What's the number? The number for any help in that case? Uh, obviously, uh, this would be associated with if you're calling SAPD and they're out there, they would make the determination that the animals need to be removed. Uh, for any animal-related issue, obviously, 311 is going to be your go-to. Uh, but uh, if you have an SAPD officer on site, we work very, very closely with, with those officers. How long has that uh, service been? Did you guys just launch it? Is this something uh, it's, it's, it's been in place for a few months now, uh, but it is something that, uh, obviously, as domestic violence came to the forefront, uh, with city council and with city leadership, uh, SAPD and ACS teamed up and said, you know, we need to find a way to make this work so that individuals that are in these situations can obviously have uh, uh, a way to remove themselves from a, a potentially hazardous situation. Uh, we do realize that oftentimes uh, victims are unwilling to leave because they fear for their animals. And we have investigated and convicted individuals in the past of doing harm to their significant others uh, animal in those domestic violence situations. So it's, it's a very real situation that we uh, uh, that we work closely with SAPD on. Any other questions? Anything else we didn't ask you you think might be important you want to mention? Um, I, the, the big thing I would say is uh, I think that it is very important for folks to know uh, the city of San Antonio uh, takes this very, very seriously, uh, the welfare of these animals. Uh, these <laughs> SAPD officers, they could be devoting time to uh, to more severe human uh, crimes, human on human type crimes, if it weren't for the fact that that they had to be involved in things like this to help us. Uh, obviously, when folks do their their part as being responsible pet owners, that allows SAPD to do their job, uh, addressing more you know more pressing issues, and it allows ACS to do our job and being more uh, proactive in making communities safer. Do you have an approximate number of uh, animal abuse cases that you guys see yearly? Or? Through ACS, we file approximately, and it, it varies year to year, but we file approximately 100 uh, animal cruelty cases a year. Uh, obviously, not all of those are uh, this particular case because of changes to legislation. was just able to be escalated to a third-degree felony. Normally, it would have been a state jail felony, um, but uh, hopefully... Uh, legislators taking that strong stand is going to get through to people that we will prosecute to the greatest extent of the law. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you guys so much.